Valkyrie Elysium currently has an interesting stand on YouTube. Content creators describing the game as a complete fail, comments under the video however mentioned exactly the opposite. So what exactly is wrong here? Is the game as bad as everyone says or does Valkyrie Elysium offer an ambrosia for RPG fans? In my review, I'm gonna answer the question if this game is something you want to check out. The story of Valkyrie Elysium begins pretty much in the end of the North mythology era. Odin, the old father, was severely wounded in the fight against the wolf Fenrir and at the same time the all-consuming Twilight Ragnarok is approaching. But there is one last hope. The only remaining Valkyrie must follow the oath she swore to Odin, purify and collect the souls of the dead who are now roaming the country and wrecking everything. Not only that but also to collect certain artifacts that should help to stop the disaster at the last second. Without hesitation, the Valkyrie sets out to fulfill Odin's wish. The player takes control over the Valkyrie and can perform light and strong attacks. Even with only two buttons, you can perform a good amount of combos on ground or air. With the soul chain, you can not only reach platforms in level, but also chain combos or reach your next opponent faster. Additionally, you can also use magic spells with the cost of some of your art gauge, or call two of your companions at the same time. For that, you need to spend some of your soul gauge. By progressing through the story, you're going to find more companions to join your cause. Your support characters can be summoned and will join battle with their own abilities and elementary powers that gives you a boost in that specific element. Calling the right companion and taking advantage of their elemental boost and powers is crucial and will decide how the battle will end since you'll get overrun by dozens and dozens of enemies. Your support characters will become stronger the more often you call them into battle. Also, new abilities can be unlocked by completing their side quests. Whenever you decide to upgrade weapons, unlock new skills, you'll gain more and more moves or combo extensions. For example, you'll unlock a double dash. Attacking after the first dash gives you a complete different attack than after the double dash. Same for jump or double jump. You can parry also in multiple variations. Parry with a block button exactly when the enemy is about to hit you gives you three attack possibilities. Attack right after you blocked an enemy attack and you'll have three other different counter attacks. Attacking just before an enemy is about to hit Yep, another 3. And there is even also the auto summon option in case your defense gets broken by an enemy. If an enemy breaks your defense, a companion will jump and attack that enemy with an ability you set for him. However, to unlock all these options, you'll need gems that you'll get after defeating enemies. Each chapter in story missions has its own gems, which prevents you to become too OP early in the game. So even if you decide to grind, you'll have to proceed in the story to upgrade the rest of your abilities. For some abilities, you'll not only need gems, but also a specific weapon proficiency. To rise the proficiency, you'll have to simply use that weapon more often. In total, you have five. The standard sword, a stronger but slower sword, a fast fencer, and different spears. The combat system is really fun. It doesn't really get repetitive or boring because of the constant expansions of combos, new magic spells, new moves you learn, or the addition of new characters which can also learn new abilities by completing the side quests. Combining everything together is great. Now something that I must say is that even with the amount of variety in combat, the game can be frustrating if the player mashes buttons because cancelling out of moves or mid combo with a dash requires perfect timing. You really have to pay attention to your rhythm and know from the start what you actually want to do. Blindly pushing buttons will put you in a very bad position and you will be punished quickly. Same goes if you call for the wrong companion or magic spell. Getting used to the controls and finding the perfect flow can take time, but it pays off. Finishing the fight with over 500 or even 1000 hits is really satisfying. I recommend turning off the assists. This will give you even more freedom in the fight and you can decide you for yourself when to give your opponent the finishing blow. We're coming to the negatives already because besides the fighting, the game doesn't really offer much. The levels are only full with enemies and blossoms you can collect. You do have side quests, but those really feel lazy. By finding and talking to ghosts during main missions, you'll be able to spawn later in the exact same map and complete side objectives, which is, like the main missions, fight through the map till you find the endpoint and collect your reward. Which is really what you do all the time. You fire your way through levels and report to Odin over and over and over and over again. Doesn't matter if you play in Japanese or English voiceover, the lip syncing is completely off. Which could be very annoying, but it even doesn't get that far because apart from the handful of dialogues with Odin and the support characters, the main protagonist hardly speaks. The story in general is kind of thin. Besides the introduction cutscenes, nothing else interesting happens till you reach endgame. In the game, you'll encounter another Valkyrie you fight against, but that is stretched out. You fight her and she is gone, then she appears again 4 hours later 
and she is gone again and then she appears another four hours later and she is gone again before you know it youth 80 percent through the game before that gets to anywhere i mean this is the north mythology i don't know about you but this has great material for an interesting story but the game doesn't even try the game tries to put your companions into spotlights since they have their own little mini story but that has been done lazy here. You have some dialogues that ends up doing side quests for them which is again fight and collect your reward. The maps are completely empty and very linear and doesn't invite the players to explore. The combat system is fun but definitely not perfect. Like I mentioned before, if you find your rhythm you're gonna enjoy it but that is easier said than done because even if you do everything right, your character will get stuck eventually in corners or somewhere in the middle surrounded with enemies with a camera angle so bad it is impossible to escape. Seriously, the camera will simply not follow which shit hits the fan in combat which makes you create a sixth sense somehow for this game. The fuck is going on right now? Shitty shit, I'm still kicking ass. <laughs> the Valkyrie is utterly slow and painfully stiff if you don't activate Aegon's electric powers which boosts your speed. The worst part is however how slow the block animation is in this game. It will take literally seconds to be full in defense stance. That makes your offensive really the best defense since hits will interrupt enemy attacks. Even with all the new moves you get, you never find that special ultimate or special attack which you see in one of the first cutscenes. I really wish you'll be able to unlock one of those attacks where everybody jump into a cool animation since the game mainly focuses here on fighting. Also something that would make the combat system more complete would be the possibility to change or upgrade armor as well but unfortunately that is not possible. Enemies are recycled here to a maximum. We have one, two, three, four, five. Six, six times, <laughs> just different elements. Goes also for the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, the dragons, one, two, three, four. <laughs> The combo meter is not interruptible, which means the counter will continue even if you get held multiple times. Even if you play on hard, that can be changed. I wish Square Enix would add a new game plus with a harder difficulty setting and optional combo meter breaker if the player gets hit, but after finishing the game, there is nothing more to do. I mean, I played the game in hard and finished all the side missions in 20 hours. Most missions is also done here in S rank, so I don't see a reason why I should come back to a Valkyria Lucy. It took me around 20 hours for my playthrough in Heart, and I finished all the side missions. The combat system and upgrades gave me motivation to proceed in the game, but unfortunately besides the fun combat system, the game doesn't offer much. My final verdict for Valkyria Lucy is a 7 out of 10. If you're looking for a JRPG game with some interesting fighting system, you might want to take a look at this, but if you're looking for a deep story driven game, you should probably check out the previous installments of the franchise. Muchas gracias por ver. Gracias.